Welcome to Tomahawk TV's Living Arcade Retro Game Fans. And that there was West Mansion, the macabre location of Splatterhouse, one of my all-time favorite games for the good old TurboGrafx-16. In Splatterhouse, you play as Rick, a college student who along with his honey Jennifer take cover from a storm within the mansion. This turns out to be a huge mistake as the mansion is home to notorious parapsychologist Dr. West, who performed gruesome experiments there before going missing. Rick hears Jennifer scream as he's being knocked unconscious, and when he awakens, finds her missing, and a horrible mass strapped to his head. This mass gives Rick superhuman strength and leads him deeper into the mansion in search of his lost love. Now, Splatterhouse originally appeared in arcades, and is a rare game to find in the wild. The TurboGrafx version was the only port of the arcade game that was released in the US, so for most of us, it was the only way to experience this game, and it's a fairly accurate port. Sure, the Turbo version is missing some background detail that was in the arcade, but the sprites are big and animate well, and the graphics are colorful and gruesome to look at. Likewise, the chiptune music is also pretty awesome. It sets the mood perfectly and is creepy and fun to listen to. Unfortunately in the US, the TurboGrafx-16 version of Splathouse did get some minor edits and alterations. Among them is the church altar was removed, as well as the cross at the end being changed to a gravestone. But it's not such a big deal and back then we sure didn't know any better. However, the biggest alteration by far is to the mask. In the original version of Splatterhouse, the mask was literally a hockey mask. And Rick looked even more like Jason Voorhees than he does now. But as you can see, the color was changed to red and some details were altered. I can remember getting Splatterhouse as a kid and having no idea what to expect from this game. Back then there was no internet, so a lot of the times we had only the box to go by, and if we were lucky enough, a magazine article about the game. But God knows, the TurboGrafx-16 didn't get much media attention back then. As one of the few lucky enough to own a TurboGrafx-16 back in the day, Splatterhouse was a real treat for me. Next to Ghosts and Goblins for the NES, it was probably one of the first horror themed games I had ever played. If you're a horror film fan, you're going to find a ton of film references in Splatterhouse. I mean, the main character, Rick, is a dead ringer for Jason Voorhees. Even if the US version of the mask was altered, you can tell that's Jason Voorhees. You're playing as Jason fucking Voorhees. And you're going to find even more references to movies like Evil Dead, Poltergeist, Reanimator, and even Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery. And guys, look that movie up. If I have any complaints about Splatterhouse, it's that the game is a little on the short side and also too easy to beat on the default settings. I mean, when I first got Splatterhouse, I beat the game the same night. However, I find the game so unique and so much fun to play, and I've beaten the game so many times over the years, that I don't really find that as such a negative flaw. Splatterhouse for the TurboGrafx-16 is a true gem, backed up by its solid and fun gameplay. Even with its short length, it's a blast to play through time and again. Splatterhouse is a retro gamer's must have. Hey guys, this is Horror Joe, and welcome to the Collector's Corner section of my little look at Splatterhouse. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Like I said, Splatterhouse is one of my all-time favorite games for the TurboGrafx-16. It's definitely a game very unique to that system. Uh, the original arcade Splatterhouse only ever got ported to the TurboGrafx-16 in the US, so if you own this system, it definitely was a great gem to have in your collection. Uh, this is my Splatterhouse. Most TurboGrafx-16 games came packaged in these thin cardboard boxes. And the TurboGrafx-16 was very notorious for bad box art, but I kind of like Splatterhouse. It definitely stands out. Definitely stood out to me when I was a kid. 
I especially like this little bit in the corner. The horrifying theme of this game may be inappropriate for young children and cowards. That's awesome. And here we have the back with some screenshots and details. Like I said in my review, a lot of times we only had the box to go by back then. We, there was no YouTube to look up games. So a lot of times you were taking a chance on these games. And I definitely took a chance on Splatterhouse, but boy was this an awesome game. I had a lot of fun with this game when I was a kid. So after you'd open up these cardboard boxes, inside you'll find a jewel case. Or what looked like a jewel case. These are definitely unique to the TurboGrafx-16. They're not standard. Standard CD jewel cases, when you open them up inside, instead of a CD, you'll find the game's turbo chip along with the game's manual. Now these weren't anything spectacular, these were mostly black and white manuals. Production values were definitely not very high for the TurboGrafx-16. And here is the turbo chip itself. This is Splatterhouse. And this is how TurboGrafx games came out, on these thin credit card sized pieces of plastic. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Tomahawk TV and check out our other Living Arcade video game reviews. And I'll see you next time. Peace.